Hi guys, thanks for uh, watching this today. Um, I thought I would put the um, put the old MT personality to camera um, and um, get into a few uh, of what I hope will be a series of Vertex vlogs. Not all me, so please don't worry about that. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Marcus Trench. I'm the MD of Vertex Resourcing, a business that I set up back in 2006 and grew through the uh, grew through the recession. Um, today I thought that, and please don't switch off, um, I'd have a chat about GDPR or the great European Union piece of legislation, the General Data Protection Regulations, especially as we're in the process of, of communicating on this subject with many of those that we've worked with over the last uh, 10 years or so, and the fact that there is a fair bit of doom and gloom out there and a fair amount of hype. Um, mainly though, I actually wanted to talk, because there hasn't been a lot of good press on this, and I'm not painting this as a walk in the park, but about the reasons why I think GDPR isn't all bad, um, or certainly isn't the way that I see it. Um, so you've got so much hype out there at the moment that you could be forgiven for thinking this is almost like the Y2K of our, of our decade. What's going to happen to uh, you know? What's going to happen on the on the on the twenty fifth? Our business is going to be hit with subject access requests. So they're going to be admin teams caught up with reams and reams of data and all of this sort of stuff. Ultimately, no one knows. Um, so what I thought I'd do, um, taking taking a step back for a second and forgetting all the conspiracy theories about legislation just purely being political footballs and the vagueness of the principles and the lack of black and white guidelines um, and look at what GDPR seeks to do at its core. So, in essence, what the regulations are all about, and I've um, searched for some fairly good sound bites here, a fairly good snippets, it's all about giving individuals better control of their personal data and allowing businesses, in theory, to capitalize on a single digital market via building greater trust with their customers and consumers. I mean, that sounds okay, right? Um, so, in practice, what does that mean for a recruitment company? And this, well, what does it mean for any company? This is where it gets slightly more complex in that the framework of the GDPR isn't particularly specific and it certainly isn't industry specific. Um, and the organization implementing it in the, or responsible for the implementation, rather, I should say, tripping up myself there, the ICO um, can give you guidelines. Um, the piece that it's specific on is the amount that you could be fined for data leaks or breaches of data holding policy that I talk quite extensively about. So let's park, let's park theories on why that might be for a second. So in essence, um, what does it mean? Well, it is down to individual businesses to interpret the framework and ensure that it sits in line with this. Um, and certainly in terms of vertex and this isn't a pitch um, the aims that the business was set up with are as true today as they were at the um, start of 2006 right before the uh, following financial crisis that um, uh, that actually saw our growth period funnily enough um, our ethos involves um, and for any clients watching, sorry, it's not the whole low volume, um, low volume, high quality thing. Well, it is a little bit. Our ethos revolves around delivering high quality, low volume recruitment solutions via close working relationships. Kind of a less is more thing. Um, so, in theory, so from our side, we don't send bolt loads of mailers to candidates or clients. Um, slightly. Um, Funnily, apart from those we're sending as part of our GDPR revised consent process, um, we have never held extensive personal data that wasn't freely given. We've always asked permission uh, before using um, or before making any representations, uh, representations or submissions of personal details. We have never, uh, nor would ever, reveal or sell any personal data um, in, or information other than which was necessary for um, our day-to-day -day activities. And even then, we'd have the full permission of the individual involved. Um, 
even prior to GDPR, and, and th 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 there's a big debate that a lot of this is, well, this is new thinking, all this data subject and data controller piece, it isn't. Um, the DPA, or Data Protection Act um, of 1988, um, sets organizations who hold personal data, which is any information um, leading to the identification of, a, um, of an individual or as a data subject, as the GDPR refers to them as, um, so any organization is, in theory, a data controller. We took our responsibility as a data controller under the, um, under the Data Protection Act of 1988 very seriously and invested in systems and processes that minimize any risk to personal privacy. And to date, in what is nearly scarily 12 years, wrinkle show, um, we've never had any any issue arising from a loss of data and i don't anticipate one either um so we're all fine yeah great no worries we're not going to do anything about it no that's not that's not the case um what we thought um uh, about this and we're not resting on our laurels of course we're not We've, we've been involved in everything from drafting new privacy policies right way through to mapping out our right to erasure and subject access requests, new privacy policy on the website and live now, appointing a, uh, a data protection officer, and of course, formalizing a consent process with a uh, review of internal processes, including um, trying to be almost paper-free, which is, which is great. It's good for the environment. It's certainly good for a business. Um, uh, dealing with personal data. Um, the more secure in one place, the better. Um, we've invested a lot to ensure that we're as ready as possible, and that's all you can really do. Um, get your ducks in a row, basically. Um, that said, from my perspective, um, much of what is outlined in the GDPR actually reflects the principles of a business or the founding principles of operation of a business that I'm really proud still to be involved with. Um, so that's my that's my snapshot really um i can't really say what motivated me to want to shout out and talk to people today whether it's the fact that um it's a sunny day um fortunate enough to be sitting in some um rather nice new offices with a roof terrace that was a bit of a pitch sorry um but um i th i think um it's it's just that there's lots and lots of noise this isn't a gdpr guide i'm not a gdpr consultant i'll leave that to the people that are best at that all i wanted to say is um a, a time when we're dropping loads of um uh, loads of um, revised permission slips out to people via email don't worry nothing behind it other than reinforcing the pr principles rather of business that um is uh, still true to its core and I don't think this is some um, sort of horrible Y2K event and possibly a good thing for a proximate relationship focused recruitment business um, such as the one that um, me and the team are part of here in, in sunny Kingston today. Um, please feel free to reach out directly if there's something that you think I can help with. Um, vertexresourcing.com, our Facebook site, our LinkedIn site, are probably going to get in trouble with our social media marketing manager here. Our Instagram site and any other sites, all the latest news, views, um, bits on what we're up to. Check out all that good stuff. Bye for now.